On October 20th, news broke out on mainland China's social media platforms revealing a worker from Qingdao beer urinating in the ingredient warehouse, sparking widespread uproar. A video circulating online showed a man dressed in blue work uniform at Qingdao Beer's third factory unzipping and urinating after entering the beer ingredient storage tank. Given Qingdao Beer's immense popularity in China, the video left many netizens disgusted. Market supervision administrators of Pingdu City in Shandong province stated they would launch an investigation. In a statement issued on October 20th, Qingdao Beer responded that they take this incident very seriously. They have alerted the police and have sealed off the batch of malt in question. While food safety issues have occasionally arisen in China, the unsettling nature of this incident has particularly outraged the online community. Many netizens mocked the situation by uploading their own videos in response. Hey, did you hear? On October 19th, some dude at the Tsingtao beer factory number 3 was caught on camera peeing in the raw material storage. Tsingtao Market Supervision Bureau is on it now, investigating the whole thing. Drink Tsingtao beer. Savoring the pea flavors of life. Cheers! One woman claimed that after seeing the video, she felt as if there was a urine odor lingering in the air at her home, especially since she had just consumed Qingdao beer. So today, I was at my dad's birthday dinner, had some barbecue and sipped on my happy little spring. Yep, that's Qingdao beer. And you all saw me enjoying it, completely unaware of what had happened, that there was pee in that beer. Now that I've seen that video, everything around me smells like urine. Every burp tastes like it, even my chocolate, and brushing my teeth, even the toothpaste smelled of it. I just can't do this anymore. On October 21st, an insider reportedly told Daily Economic News that the individuals involved in the video, including the one filming, were contract workers. They also noted that the video seemed to be shot in an open public space, possibly inside a transportation vehicle belonging to a logistics operator. The insider further remarked that the brewery compound is heavily monitored by cameras. There were also restrooms near the incident site and many bystanders at the time, making the motives for filming and uploading the video unclear. However, this explanation was not accepted by netizens. From the footage, it's clear that it's not inside a transportation vehicle, but a raw material storage area. The person urinating in work attire is obviously a factory worker. The claims made by this so-called insider appear to be an attempt to shift the blame onto external personnel, thereby diminishing the company's responsibility. Following the incident, those involved, including the person filming, were apprehended. The official response has been met with public discontent. Some questioned why the malt was sealed and not destroyed, pondering if there were plans to use it in the future. Comments from netizens included, quote, Why apprehend the one who filmed? Isn't he just highlighting the problem? Without the video, that batch of ingredients would have become beer. Others remarked, quote, It's probably not the first time this happened. Who drank the previous batches? And, quote, Sanitary supervision is lacking. Despite multiple official statements and media efforts to debunk the so-called rumors, Qingdao beer's stock plummeted by 7.51% on October 23rd reaching a low of 75 yuan, the lowest since May 2022. This resulted in a loss of 8.3 billion yuan in market value, humorously labeled by the media as, quote, the most expensive pea in history. However, with a strong market rebound, the stock narrowed its loss, closing at 80.79 yuan, down by 0.37%. The consensus is that the stock dip was largely influenced by the circulating video. Furthermore, the devaluation of Qingdao Beer's market capitalization drew significant attention. According to sources, the brewery recorded a profit of around 3.4 billion yuan in the first half of the year. However, in contrast, the stock prices dropped over 20% this year. In April, the stock had peaked at a historic high of 125 yuan. The current loss in market value is around 36 billion yuan.
Analysts predicted that the, quote, urination incident will have lasting repercussions for Qingdao beer with estimated losses potentially reaching over 200 billion yuan. While this incident is distinct from other food safety concerns like additives or counterfeiting, the mere mention of Qingdao beer might remind consumers of urine. Given that beer, due to its color, is colloquially referred to in Chinese as resembling cat or horse urine, the association is even more damaging. The ramifications of this incident continue to amplify. As China's largest beer exporter with international renown, Qingdao beer is now under scrutiny. Media outlets in South Korea and Japan have reported on the event, with some in South Korea even advising citizens to dispose of any Qingdao beer they might have. The incident is expected to significantly impact Qingdao beer's exports. This Qingdao beer incident? It's all over the news in Korea right now. Every channel's covering it. Hosts are like, maybe check your fridge for Qingdao beer and, you know, maybe toss it. And just like that, we are back to talking about China's food safety issues, pointing fingers, saying Chinese food practices aren't sanitary. This has blown up. Look at this. There are reports on Korea's massive cabbage imports from China. The ripple effects of this incident are huge. The following are comments from the Chinese community in Japan regarding the incident. Someone asked the Japanese if they drink Qingdao beer, and guess what, they do. Qingdao is the only Chinese beer that made its mark in Japan. So, to that dude at the Qingdao beer factory, what's up with you? Couldn't find a better place? Now, even Japan's talking about it. How am I supposed to recommend Chinese beer to Japanese folks now? Seriously, what were you thinking? According to official information from Qingdao Brewery, Qingdao beer is one of the oldest beer brands in China, established in 1903. Since Qingdao city became a German colony in 1898, infrastructure and commercial ventures in the city were predominantly led by the Germans. The precursor to Qingdao Brewery was the Germania Brauerei Qingdao Co. Ltd., set up with an investment of 400,000 German marks by German and British businessmen. It was the first brewery in China and utilized German brewing technology and ingredients to produce German-style beer, primarily catering to Germans and other Westerners in China. However, after the establishment of the People's Republic of China in 1949, the brewery was nationalized and renamed the, quote, state-owned Qingdao Brewery. Subsequently, Qingdao Beer expanded its scale through acquisitions, with the most recent incident occurring at its third factory located in Pingdu City. This factory, originally the state-owned Qingdao North Sea Brewery, founded in 1986, became a part of Qingdao Brewery Limited in August 1997. As per Qingdao Beer's semi-annual report, by the first half of 2023, it owned 57 wholly owned and controlling beer production enterprises and partnered with two joint ventures. Distributed across 20 provinces, municipalities and autonomous regions in China, the company maintains a leading position in the domestic beer industry in terms of scale and market share. Qingdao beer entered the U.S. market in 1972, becoming the best-selling Chinese beer there. For some time, Qingdao's exports reached over 70 countries, accounting for more than 50% of China's beer exports. Nevertheless, with the recent economic downturn in China and a decline in consumer spending, Qingdao beer has experienced a significant decline in performance. The recent, quote, Urinegate scandal might exacerbate the brewery's future losses. Food safety has long been a concern in China, and many large-scale food companies have faced similar controversies. For instance, the, quote, pickled vegetable scandal involving the noodle giant Master Kong emerged last year. An expose on a CCTV program revealed health and preservative violations in the pickled vegetable ingredient used in their instant noodles. This revelation dealt a significant blow to Master Kong Holdings and Uni President Enterprises China, the two companies using this type of pickled vegetable. The pickled vegetable packages in question came from Hunan Chachi Vegetable Co. Ltd. 
The company sells two versions of their product, one for export made in a sanitized environment and another for domestic sale produced in traditional quilt earth pits but marketed as being of premium quality. Undercover footage showed workers stepping on pickled vegetables with bare feet, some even smoking, allowing sweat, ash and even cigarette butts to contaminate the product. The industry insiders reveal that the preservatives, sometimes exceeding safe limits by 2 to 10 times, were added to prevent spoilage. In the cleaning workshop of Chachi Vegetable, bags of pickled vegetables are found piled on the ground. After undergoing machine cleaning, chopping, seasoning, packaging and sterilization processes, they are transformed into packaged pickled vegetables. Footage from an undercover journalist revealed the manager of Chachi Vegetable, Mr. Peng, explicitly stating that these pickled vegetables undergo no hygiene tests. He also clearly stated, quote, What we pickle in standardized tanks is for export. Those used in domestic instant noodles are pickled vegetables processed in a pit. Furthermore, Peng candidly explained that in China, Fines for foreign matters like twigs found in pickled vegetables are limited to 1 to 2,000 yuan. In contrast, foreign penalties can start from a staggering 100,000 yuan. The double standards displayed by Cha Chi Vegetable has angered millions in China, who accuse the company of exploiting the domestic market. However, some believe that the phenomenon stems from the Chinese government's lax food safety regulations and light penalties for errant companies. Following the broadcast of the CCTV footage, the reputation of the instant noodles containing those pickled vegetables has been severely tarnished. In light of the gravity of the situation, Master Kong promptly issued two apologies emphasizing their remorse. They confirmed that Chachi Vegetable was their pickled vegetable supplier, subsequently terminating the partnership, sealing off pickled vegetable products and cooperating with investigations. Yet their proactive response didn't garner much sympathy as their stock price plummeted by more than 15% on March 16th. Interestingly, the other instant noodle brand, the Uni President Enterprises Corporation, found itself in a cycle of issuing, deleting and reissuing statements. Initially, they firmly refused to apologize, asserting that Cha Chi Vegetable wasn't their supplier. However, sharp-eyed netizens noticed that the instant noodle pack shown in the CCTV footage was from Uni President Enterprises, implicating them regardless of their association with Cha Chi Vegetable. Apart from Master Kong and Uni President Enterprises, several famous brands including KFC, Jin Mai Lang, and Bai Xiang Food, listed on Cha Chi Vegetable's website as partners, rushed to deny any association and demanded the removal of false information. Established in May 2005, Chachi Vegetable is a leading vegetable processing enterprise in Huarong County, Hunan Province. They produce pickled vegetable products under various brands, process products for numerous renowned enterprises and export to over 10 countries, including Japan, Germany, USA, Australia and South Korea. Cha Chi's legal representative, Yan Chin Wu, known as the, quote, mustard king, has maximized the commercial value of mustard. He said, quote, for two kilograms of mustard greens, selling them directly only yields a profit of 1.2 yuan. After initial processing and pickling, they can be sold for 2.4 yuan. However, if made into an instant noodle flavor packet, the profit can soar to 13.2 yuan, effectively increasing the value tenfold. By seizing this business opportunity, Chachi Vegetable established its financial success, growing to a prominent local enterprise with nearly 2,000 employees and assets exceeding 200 million yuan. This accomplishment earned the company several accolades, including the, quote, most trusted company by consumers in Henan province. However, for such a renowned large-scale enterprise to demonstrate a lack of responsibility towards food safety, one can only imagine the state of safety practices in many smaller food processing companies across China. Following the pickled vegetable scandal, Chachi Vegetable was ordered to halt production and was fined approximately 5.5 million yuan. The company resumed production in late April 2022 after settling the fines and passing inspections. 
A year after the incident, mainland media followed up on Chachi Vegetable and found that Yan Chinwu's shares worth 8.64 million yuan were pledged. At the same time, Hunan Chachi Vegetable Co. Ltd. began investing in a new company, Hunan Qisheng Agricultural Development Co. Ltd. with a similar business scope. Companies implicated in the scandal, like Master Kong and Uni President Enterprises, experienced a significant downturn in 2022. In reality, numerous food processing firms in China are ill-prepared for unexpected inspections or covert investigations. On October 23rd, the Gansu Market Supervision Administration carried out a surprise inspection at the Gansu Agricultural University's canteen. Initially, the inspection results seemed normal. However, a subsequent suggestion from students led to an inspection of the university's halal canteen. The sanitary conditions of this canteen were found to be deteriorating sharply, with greasy floors and exhaust hoods coated in used oil, close to drip into the cooking pans at any moment. Raw materials and meat were carelessly placed on shelves. The video release of this inspection garnered widespread attention but was soon removed by officials. This prompted a flurry of netizens to continuously re-upload the footage. Many netizens commented, quote, it's quite clear, the initial canteen they inspected was obviously pre-notified and was well prepared. The subsequent surprise inspection showed the real day-to-day -day conditions of the establishment. Food safety concerns in mainland China are endless. Some videos exposed by netizens are truly alarming, going beyond our wildest imaginations. Recently, another video was released by netizens showing workers emptying bags of skinned rats. The video claims that this rat meat is used in the spicy soup dish. It is disturbing to watch. Several other reports include the revelation of China's exported e-cigarettes undergoing questionable manual tests. Durians are soaked in a green liquid allegedly for preservation and odor control before being loaded onto vehicles. In Wenzhou, Zhejiang, workers are seen pouring a red liquid into boxes of fresh fish from fishing boats. Rumors suggest it might be formaldehyde, a carcinogenic preservative used to preserve biological body samples at hospitals. Apples, none of which are in good condition, are collected to produce juice. On October 10th, in Ankang, Shangxi, a lady found a plastic bag over 10 centimeters long in a frozen sausage bought from a supermarket. A customer discovered an insect in a beverage from the popular chain Mi Xue Bing Cheng and demanded a compensation of 1,000 yuan, only to be offered around 50 yuan by the store owner. Eggs purchased from a well-known company, CP Group, were found to be fake. The eggs had easily identifiable solid yolks, yet it looked normal from the outside. Even tofu, a relatively cheap food, can be counterfeited. The person recording the video mentioned that the tofu used in the school cafeteria is so tough that it can't even be crushed. This kind of fake tofu has reportedly been around for many years and is made by combining a small amount of isolated soy protein, modified starch, whitening agents, and gelatin to produce a white solid substance. Its nutritional value is much lower than that of genuine tofu and it is also hard to digest after consumption. The biggest advantage is that it can remain fresh for one to two months at room temperature without any issues. Not only are flies and cockroaches unable to infest it, but even mold can grow on it. It's extremely cheap, with the cost being just a few cents per kilogram. Takeout kitchens and pre-made meal factories are fond of it. It's also a commonly used ingredient in school cafeterias. On October 10th, a student from North China University of Technology revealed that they found what appeared to be a rat's head in their meal at the school cafeteria, which the cafeteria claimed was beef. The school quickly issued a directive to halt the spread of the news among students and prohibited the sharing of this information on various online platforms, including Douyin, TikTok, and other social media outlets. On October 8th, in Wuhan, Hebei, someone reported that a roasted duck shop was soaking their ducks in a restroom.